Hummus is the original snack food. People have been eating this chickpea dip for hundreds of years. Countries from the Mediterranean to the Middle East lay claim to its invention. But one thing is beyond dispute. As an appetizer or side dish, hummus isn't just a passing fad. Besides being very tasty, hummus is also an important vegetarian source of protein. The word hummus is actually Arabic for chickpea, which is, of course, the main ingredient. The chickpeas arrive at the factory in dried form. They ride a conveyor belt and then spill down onto a long vibrating tray. It shakes out heavier contaminants like pebbles or twigs. The contaminants fall into a bin below, while the chickpeas bounce off the tray and into a tub of filtered water to be rinsed. Still dripping wet, it's onto a conveyor with perforated buckets. The water drains from the chickpeas as they're transferred to big tanks. Each tank holds thousands of chickpeas. They add clean water and soak the chickpeas. After 14 hours in the tank, they swell to twice their size and soften up. They pump the softened chickpeas into big trays, which they stack on a cart. Then it's into a huge cylindrical steam cooker that's been preheated to around 124 degrees Celsius. They bake the chickpeas for just over half an hour. This softens them even more and darkens the color. From dried beans to soaked and then cooked. They now transfer the cooked chickpeas to the next conveyor and they're on the way to being ground to a pulp. This is the grinder, now being reassembled after cleaning. It has two sharp toothed circular blades. One is stationary and the other revolves. A turn screw will force the chickpeas through these toothed blades to grind them up. Quick test confirms this grinder is in working order. Meanwhile, the chickpeas have arrived at a hopper above the grinder. As the chickpeas spill into the hopper, they add water and a blend of sunflower and olive oil, followed by salt, garlic and other dry ingredients. This mix now flows into the grinding device below and is turned into paste. The next ingredient is tahini. It's a thick paste made from ground sesame seeds. Three powerful pumps pulverize the tahini to evenly disperse the particles, so it can now be blended with the chickpea mix. Large steel blades revolve to thoroughly mix all the ingredients in a tank and produce hummus. For different flavoured hummus, they add red pepper, more garlic or other ingredients. After the blended product is pasteurised, a technician takes a sample to test for mould, shelf life and consistency. She also does her own taste test. If the flavour seems even slightly off, they'll put the product on hold and tweak the ingredients. But this batch gets the nod. Meanwhile, plastic containers are queuing for a fill-up. Machinery moves them forward towards piston fillers. The pistons push the creamy hummus out of nozzles and into the tubs. Now filled to the brim with hummus, the tubs travel under a sheet of plastic film. Hot round irons melt the plastic to seal it to the rims. Suctioning devices swoop down to apply the lids and the hummus heads towards a roll of adhesive back labels. A sensor detects the approach of the tubs and triggers a device with air jets to slap the labels on the lids. The tubs are ready to dispatch to delis around the world. 